Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K Facebook Live. And today I'm going to show you a, a little bit of a, a fun fold, which is not something that I normally do. <laughs> so a little bit of a fun fold card for you today. Um, made with the Feels Like Home stamp set. This is one of those uh, stamp sets that is only available for a few more days from Stampin' Up! And uh, it's one of the celebration items. So it's one that is, it's really pretty and kind of um, flew under the radar for me a little bit. I can't say that, you know, I, it's, um, it's pretty, but it's not one until you actually stamp with it and play with it uh, that may catch your eye. But um, definitely it should catch your eye. <laughs> and I think you, uh, you know, like I said, it's one that I think you'll like if you get your hands on it. So this actually you can get for free uh, during celebration, um, which ends on September 30th, which is Thursday. And I'm just, it's shocking to me that I'm even saying the end of September is Thursday. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the whole month. So uh, but this is one of the stamp sets that you can earn for free with an order of $50 or greater. It's got some really pretty sentiments in it and some pretty images. Um, I actually uh, didn't use the sentiments from this stamp set. I just used the images. I'm like in desperate need of birthday cards. I don't know about you guys, but uh, birthday cards, I have tons and tons of family that has birthdays uh, in the fall time frame, and so I'm constantly scrounging and trying to get birthday cards done. So I thought this one would kind of work as a fall birthday card. Hey, Bree and Danette and Kay, I'm glad y'all are here. Thanks for joining today. Uh, so this is my, like, kind of the extent of my fancy fold or fun fold cards. I'm not very good at these, and I struggle a little bit with them, but this one is really easy. <laughs> and I think it's, you know, it's a cute, cute little design and super easy to do, and that's kind of what I stick with when I'm doing my, you know, again, fancy folds. I should put that in air quotes because... <laughs> Fancy fold is not really what it is. So, hey, Kay, and or, um, thanks, Kay. I appreciate that, and I'm um, glad that Karen and Akiko are joining as well. All right, so that is the card we're going to be making today, and again, it's the Feels Like Home stamp set that I used uh, for the images on it, and then um, I also used one of my very favorite die set, sets, the Stitched Rectangles dies, and I used, oh, if I can get it pulled off of here. Some days my fingers work better than others. It probably doesn't help that I just put on a bunch of lotion and <laughs> so I'll probably be dropping everything for the whole video. Uh, but I used the third largest of the um, stitched rectangle dies to cut out the panel that I um, had on the card front as well as the panel on the inside of the card. So let me get that out of the way. And then the other die set that I use is the Tasteful Labels dies. And um, I use the largest circle to cut out the birthday sentiment on here. So, hey, Jillian, glad you're here. And Diane as well. And uh, it's, it is a really pretty stamp set. Like I said, it kind of flew under the radar a little for me until I stamped it the first time. I'm like, oh, it's pretty. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I also use the Welcoming Window stamp set um, just for the birthday sentiment on this one. I thought the, the, the sentiment went well with the design of the card. So that is why I used that one. And I think that's about all. I mean, it's kind of just a little bit of designer paper from the In Bloom Designer Series paper pack and a little bit of coloring, and that's kind of it. So it's not, not a terribly difficult card to make. Uh, a couple things I wanted to remind you about. Hey, Carol and uh, Marilyn. Hopefully I'm still live. I see something looks like it's frozen on my screen. Okay, I think I'm back. All right. Um, so Carol and Marilyn and uh, Corinne, I'm glad y'all are here. Uh, one, a couple other celebration reminders. Again, the deal where you get the free bundle with your starter kit purchase from Stampin' Up! is ending at the end of celebration as well. So that ends on Thursday. So if you have not joined and are considering it, jump in and do it. Um, you know, there's no reason not to, other than maybe you just don't like to get a discount. <laughs> so um, there's no requirement to sell anything to anyone other than yourself, um, and you don't even have to do that. You can just join, and if you decide it's not right, then, you know, you drop and go back to being a customer. So if you are interested in getting a whole bunch of free stuff from Stampin' Up!, then join because you get to, the starter kit is $99. You get to pick $125 worth of merchandise of your choice uh, in the starter kit, and then on top of that, you get a free bundle. And you also get a free paper pumpkin kit and a few business supplies. And if you decide not to do the business route, that's okay. You know, that's all, all there is to it. So, um, but if you're interested in joining or have any questions, let me know. But let me know soon because this deal ends on Thursday and I don't want you to wait till the very last minute and then not be able to join or whatever. So let me know if you have questions on that. Um, another reminder, we have the Ink and Crew World Card Making Day event happening on Saturday, which is World Card Making Day. Um, we're just going to be doing live presentations kind of similar to this all throughout the day and sharing card projects and some fun little giveaways and things. Um, so we invite everybody to come join us. Uh, I'm going to be posting the link on Friday 
the 1st of October to join. So be on the lookout for that on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com, on my Facebook page, which, you know, you're here already, so you know what that is. Again, just search for Stamp with Amy K uh, on Facebook and you will find me. And again, I'll be posting all the links and the details on Friday so you can hop in and join us and be ready to go on Saturday when we start doing the live presentations. So Barbara hasn't used the stamp set yet. You need to. It's a good one. <laughs> so, and uh, hey, Debbie, I'm glad you're joining as well. So today, I actually, I've done some of the things ahead of time, but I wanted to show you really quickly the scoring on this one, because again, you know, it's very complex with my very difficult <laughs> cards that I make. Um, so I have a piece of Cajun Craze cardstock, and I'm hoping that I'm on screen. Uh, it looks like I am. And I've got my um, scoring tool here, and we are going to score at two and three quarters. So just going to do that. And then I'm going to, whoop, I got a little crazy on my score line there. Okay. And then we are going to flip it over and score it at five and a half. So five and a half would be my normal scoring on a card base. Um, so that's the one that's going to fold it right in the middle. And then this one is the fold for the little flap. Now you don't really have to do the flip over and scoring part, but I choose to do that just because I feel like it folds a little bit better when I do it that way. Um, but it's up to you. If you don't want to do that and just want to score them both on the same side, you can certainly do that. All right, so we've got our score lines on here, and we're gonna start sticking things together. So um, I've done, again, some of the pre-cutting ahead of time. This is from the In Bloom uh, Designer Series Paper Pack, and uh, it's got some pretty florals on the back of it, or pretty greenery on the back of it, I should say. But I really like the brick wall with the look with the um, little bike image and things. So the designer paper is cut to three and seven eighths, tall by uh, five and one eighth wide, and I'm adhering it to a piece of basic white cardstock, which is four by five and a quarter. And we're just using the stamp and seal to stick the two pieces of paper together. Oh, if I can get this turned <laughs> and, and stuck together, that'd be good. All right, and again, just trying to line it up so that it's fairly straight and fairly even all around the edges. And then we're gonna take this piece and we're just gonna adhere it to the card base. And I'll show you in a second where I'm going to do that at. So I've got my score lines here. This one is the two and three quarters, and here's my five and a half inch score line. And I'm just going to take this and center it right here in the five and a half inch by four and a quarter inch area, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to stick that together like that, and that becomes then the inside of the card. All right, the other piece of paper that I have cut here is... Um, I've got another piece of the designer series paper, the um, brick wall designer series paper from the in, I just totally lost the name of it, uh, the Bloomer You Planted. I think I've called it the wrong thing probably 12 times, but it's Bloomer You Planted designer series paper. <laughs> Hopefully I haven't called it all wrong the entire time. Um, but this piece of designer series paper is two and three eighths inch wide by three and seven eighths inches tall. And this is two and a half inches wide for the basic white by four inches tall for the basic white on here. And before I proceed to the next step, normally I don't fold these, but when I'm trying to sort of get the bricks to line up, I like to fold it ahead of time before I put my adhesive on um, so that I can see sort of where things should be going. So here's my five and a half inch score line. And then here's the two and three quarters and I'm just gonna fold that little flat back. And again, just do a little quick crease on that with my bone folder. And then we're gonna put the adhesive on the back of the basic white cardstock panel. Hey, Linda, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you like this set too. I see Ginny is here as well. So I'm glad y'all are joining me today. So when I do this, what I wanna do is try to get them lined up top to bottom and then centered. So my hope in doing it is that it looks like one continuous brick across so which i know it isn't technically and whatever because it's chopped up but i try to get it as lined up as possible on the top and the bottom and by folding the flaps in and then adhering this piece that allows me to do that a little bit easier um, so hopefully it looks all right and fairly lined up on the screen it looks all right and fairly lined up to me so i'm assuming that all is good uh, with what you guys can see I did this ahead of time just to save us a minute um, stamping and die cutting and all that sort of thing. It's stamped in Tuxedo Black Memento Ink on basic white cardstock, and then I cut around it with the third largest of the stitched rectangle dies. Um, so pretty basic, but again, just basic white. Um, I'm starting with uh, the light Cajun Craze uh, Stampin' Blends marker, 
And hey, Jan, I'm glad you're here. And Jamie's here as well and Penny. So I appreciate y'all joining today. So I'm starting with this marker and I'm gonna use the bullet tip end of it. And what I'm gonna do is just sort of trace really quickly and I'm not doing this neatly at all. Um, it's sort of supposed to look a little, I don't know, artsy is what I think when I do this. Um, so I'm just sort of tracing along the edges of the bricks and again, not even tracing them very nicely, just kind of drawing in here where I think there should be bricks, but there aren't really any um, shown and doing the same thing over here. Just gonna come over here, do some little uh, kind of L shapes where I think the bricks should be. And then we're gonna come back and lighten this up a little bit. So don't worry, it's not gonna look this dark the whole time. <laughs> and um, it's supposed to look kinda, I don't know, vintage -y and aged and whatever. So then what I do is I come back in with my color lifter. And again, I'm using the bullet tip end on that. And I'm just gonna scribble over all these little marks that I've just made and kinda do a circular motion so that it becomes not only lighter, but hopefully sort of blends into the paper a little bit. This does take a second to sort of get that full effect, so don't panic if it doesn't look exactly the way you want it to initially. Give it a minute to dry, and then if you don't like it, you want it to be lighter, you want it to be more smeary looking, come back after the fact and scribble on it a little bit more. So that's all, I mean, it's a super easy technique. Hopefully you can kinda see, um, so this side is basically done, this side is not, so I'm hoping that it's showing up on the screen fairly well, um, that it's kind of lightening and blending just a little bit, that ink that I've put down on the paper. Um, and again, it's just a super quick and little thing that I do. Um, a lot of times when I'm using blends and I want it to be a lighter color, I want it to look a little more, I don't know, rustic, vintage, whatever the, the right term is. Um, but I just got a notification saying that somebody wants to join in my video. I don't know that I'm gonna do that. <laughs> So, um, all right, so there we go. So that's kind of the, how I did the brick. Really easy and uh, quick to do. Um, I also colored with whoop, light Cajun craze, uh, the little flower pot down here. And uh, it's gonna be a similar technique where I'm just gonna come in and leave just a little, kind of, again, it's more of like a scratchy look. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm not coloring it in completely or making it look really, you know, detailed and all that sort of thing, just sort of scratching the color on. And then I'm gonna take my um, color lifter again and just sort of color over it. And that lifts off some of the color and blends it a little bit. And that's all there is for that. Um, the flooring, or the, I don't know, is that flooring? I don't, the ground. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's inside or outside of the house. I guess it's the outside of the house. Um, I'm gonna take light crumb cake and we're gonna color. Again, just kind of doing a little scratchy color. I'm, I'm not even nicely filling everything in and making sure that every little line is, is done neatly. I'm just sort of scratching the color on. And that's one thing I like about these types of images. They don't have to be perfectly colored and they look fantastic. And um, perfect coloring is not something that I'm very, <laughs> very good at. Um, so I tend to like these kinds of images because they're a little more uh, friendly for people who aren't really excellent at coloring. Uh, I use cinnamon cider on the little uh, doormat. At least I assume this is the doormat. I'm not even entirely sure, um, but I'm calling it the doormat. So if that's not what it is, then don't tell me because <laughs> that's what it is in my mind is a doormat. All right, so again, I've got the light cinnamon cider. And again, I'm just sort of doing that same scratchy technique over the top of it. And then I'm gonna come back again with the color lifter and sort of lighten and lift it and Again, you're just gonna see it takes a minute, so don't color over it tons and tons and tons and keep going back and back and back over it. Um, so give it a minute, and if it's not light enough and you wanna change the color, then you can always come back and lighten it. Um, but if you take too much away, then it gets a little, you, know, you can recolor it, but it doesn't work quite as well um, on the recoloring. I don't know why, I just have a harder time, and maybe those who are better at coloring um, have better luck with it than I do, but um, generally I try not to take too much of the color away. Uh, but if it happens, just come back and recolor a little bit. All right, I have got light balmy blue that I'm using as my next color. And again, just using the, the bullet tip end on it and not even very nicely coloring, just sort of scratching the color on. 
And I wanna almost miss a few spots on it, just so that, it, again, trying to get it to look a little more aged and vintagey, and that was kinda the look I was going for, so I didn't really worry about coloring everything in really perfectly on it. Oh, I'm throwing markers around. Um, I've got light so saffron, that's the next color. And if I didn't say it was balmy blue that I was using on the blue, and just gonna add a little bit of color around the door with the light so saffron. Again, my awesome coloring technique, which is just sort of scratching the, the ink on, not really doing a nice job of coloring it um, because I wanted to look, that was, that was the look I was going for. At least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so, all right, so that is it for the coloring around the door. Um, need to start on the bike and the trees. So I've got dark so saffron that I'm gonna be using to color the flowers that are on the bike. And again, I just sort of did it as a big wad of flowers in there. Um, if there are a lot of detailed flowers in there, I am not seeing them. So I just sort of did it as, as a sort of a bunch of flowers and just did them all with the dark so saffron. Um, I used a little tiny bit of the, that's the wrong color, Evening Evergreen is the one I'm looking for. And I have a huge pile of markers laying here, so <laughs> that's why I keep grabbing and accidentally grabbing the wrong one. Um, so I've got a little bit. This is uh, Light Evening Evergreen, and I'm just coming back in and trying to add a little bit of green, greenery, whatever you want to call it, um, into that flower, little flower box over there. And I probably could do the same thing. I guess I didn't on my original card, but I could probably add a little bit of it in here again, here and there on the, the basket of flowers to make it look a little more, maybe a little more realistic. Um, I'm gonna use dark balmy blue to color in. Whoop, I'm gonna use the bullet tip on this just because it's skinny little lines. Um, so I'm using dark balmy blue to color in the frame of the bike. And while I'm coloring this in, I wanted to remind you that I actually have a double reward point ordering bonus going on through the end of celebration. So it's also ending on uh, September 30th, which is Thursday. So if you are uh, wanting to put in an order uh, to get your last few celebration items, feel free to order and um, you'll get double points for me. So yay for that. Um, all right. Uh, I am using... Uh, so gray granite, I wanted to call it smoky slate, but I knew that wasn't right. Gray granite, and again, just using the light to color in the wheels on the bike. Is that like wheels on the bus, wheels on the bike? And I think we'll do the bike seat in uh, gray granite as well. Oh, and actually I looked and realized that I had colored in this little flower pot with gray granite. And again, just did the kind of same scratchy technique. And then take my color lifter and come back and blend it together a little bit over there. Um, I used uh, light crumb cake to color in the basket on the bike. So we're gonna take that and again, just do a little scratchy coloring on it. Um, super easy, as well as a little basket up above. And now we just kind of have some greenery left to do. So I have just jade. Um, and again, I kind of pulled most of the colors, not all of them, from the um, Bloom where you're planted, designer series paper. I almost called it the wrong thing again. Um, so that's where I try to pull the shades of green that I'm using. I tried to, to um, pull from there so that I thought they coordinated nicely in the designer series paper. And so Stampin' Up! makes it easy for us to have things coordinate as well. So I figured I might as well just use their expertise and just go with, yep, that, I think that works. <laughs> so I liked the colors in the paper, so that's what I went with. Um, so again, I'm using Just Jade and adding a little bit of color. Um, that was the light Just Jade. I'm going to come in with a little bit of the dark Just Jade. And again, just add in a few little spots of color here and there. Um, not really coloring it very neatly or following any sort of a pattern on anything. Just kind of trying to put in things so that it's got a little bit more depth in that. And then scratch over it with the, the light if there's anywhere that looks a little, little darker than you want it to be. All right, the final image on the card front is the tree, and I used uh, light crumb cake again to color in the trunk of the tree. And again, this is one of those images that it's hard to tell what are the trees and what are the branches, or what are the leaves, I should say, and what are the branches. Um, so I just kind of made it up. <laughs> so I know that's not probably what you wanted to hear, but just sort of drew some, some lines down the tree trunk, what I thought the tree trunk would be. And then I've got uh, light and dark soft succulent for my markers that I'm using to color in the tree, um, the leaves on the tree. And again, I'm not really doing a nice job of coloring. I'm just sort of getting some color on the tree. 
um, trying to follow the basic outline that they've given me um, and not really color all of it in. Again, that's the one nice thing about these kinds of images is that you can sort of do them a little artsy and more just scribbly and um, you don't have to spend a lot of time coloring it and I think they still look good. At least in my opinion, it looks good. <laughs> and I'm sure yours will too. So, all right, so just doing, again, just adding a little bit of um, soft succulent Stampin' Blends marker uh, ink over that. And then we'll come back in with just a little bit of the dark and just add a few areas in. And again, I'm just sort of randomly almost making dots on it. Um, little dashes, maybe is what you can call them. Um, throughout the tree just to give it a little bit of a little bit of depth and that's all my goal is to do it so um so that's it all right so that's it for the card front coloring it's again super super easy um and doesn't require any expert coloring <laughs> as you can see from my coloring um that i've got a piece of uh cajun craze cardstock which is cut to three and an eighth by four and a half and we're just going to adhere the little piece of um, basic white cardstock that i've just colored to that Cajun Craze panel. Again, just with stamp and seal. And again, just gonna center it and stick it down. So nothing too difficult there. Um, then on my card front, because it, I wanna be able to make sure that it still opens, the only thing you wanna do is make sure that you only put adhesive on about half of the back of this and make sure it's on the right, well, make sure it's on the left half. Correct half is what I should be saying and not the right side. Um, so you wanna put it on, and I might not even go all the way to half. What I would probably do is about a third of it on the left hand side. So again, make sure you're on the left side, flip it over and put about, um, put adhesive on about one third of it, maybe a little over one third of it. Um, and stamp and seal is a good strong adhesive. So I don't worry about it coming apart. And then, what I want to do is center it on the entire card front. So I'm trying to get it so that it's centered all the way around the edge, and I think I got it pretty close to that. All right, and that's it for most of the card front. The only thing we have left is our sentiment, which the sentiment, again, is from the Welcoming Window stamp set, and I did that in Cinnamon Cider ink. So uh, the designer series paper is the Bloom Where You're Planted designer paper. It, goes, it actually coordinates with the... Um, uh, plentiful plants uh, stamp set bundle uh, in the current annual catalog. So go take a peek at that. It's all in the same suite of things. Um, all right, so I stamped that in uh, cinnamon cider ink. And again, I'm using my little circle die from the Tasteful Labels dies. And hopefully I didn't stamp it too crazy. I think it will. Yep, I think it's going to work. Because um, I looked at it, I'm like, oh, it's a little low. I think it'll work though. All right. I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine, which is right over here to my right hand side. So I'll be off screen for just a minute. Hopefully y'all are enjoying a beautiful Tuesday. We had a little rain here, but it's um, cooling off and definitely turning fall here in my area of New Jersey. I don't know about everywhere in New Jersey, but um, where I'm at, it definitely is. All right, so we've got our little sentiment done. And I'm gonna take a couple little Stampin' Dimensionals, which I cut my Stampin' Dimensionals in half, so they're sort of mini Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm gonna, where I put the Stampin' Dimensionals on here, I kinda wanna put them in the center because I'm gonna stick this on so that it's hanging off the card a little bit. And I just wanna make sure that I don't have any adhesive hanging where it's gonna actually stick to the backing on the card, um, because that would not be so nice if it's all stuck together and then you're ripping up your pretty designer paper. Um, so just kind of try to keep them concentrated towards the center. And then we're gonna adhere this to the card front, sort of right over in the spot that I left a little bit bare. <laughs> so when I die cut this, that was probably one thing I forgot to say when I did the die cutting on it, I intentionally slid my die over just a little bit to the right so that I'd have a little bit of white space over here for the sentiment. Um, Cause I didn't want to cover up the pretty image with the sentiment. So, um, so that's why I did it the way that I did it. And I actually am going to do a little stamping and coloring here for you on the inside of the card. So this is the little tiny flower image, flower pot image. And I think it's actually tulips in there. At least that's what it appears to be to me. But again, I am no flower expert. Um, we're going to stamp that in Tuxedo Black Memento ink here on the bottom of a piece of basic white cardstock that I have cut with that same die. Um, it's a, the third largest of the stitched rectangles dies. And basic white cardstock, if I didn't say that already, I think I did, but I don't know, sometimes I start talking and can't remember what I have and haven't said. Um, 
I've got the light crumb cake Stampin' Blends marker. And again, I'm just gonna do a little scratching around the bottom of it here to make it look like the ground or the dirt or the whatever you wanna call it. And then I've got light Cajun craze and I'm gonna color the flower pot. And again, it's gonna be that same kind of scratchy look that I did on the card front, um, vintagey, whatever you wanna call it. All right, so we're gonna do that and then come back in with the color lifter and sort of blend everything together here in the middle and lighten it a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna grab my Just Jade markers, Stampin' Blends markers, and I'm gonna to try to color in the petal. The pe these are not petals, these are leaves. <laughs> color in the leaves <laughs> on my image. And um, I see that I went a little out of the lines, and I don't know if you can see that on the left-hand side, and I'll show you in just a minute how I um, can shove that back into the lines with the color lifter. Um, so again, this is the light Just Jade Stampin' Blends marker. And then I'm gonna come back in with the dark and just kind of put a little bit of dark in here down in the center and a little bit around the leaves um, where I think it should be a little darker. Um, but I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a couple of boo-boos where I went out of the line here. And I just can, if you wanna get rid of those, if you don't like the look of that, you can actually grab your color lifter. And again, this may take a few tries depending on how dark the color is, but you can take your color lifter and basically kind of shove the ink back inside the lines and then nobody will know that you had a boo-boo. So go ahead and do that. Give it a second to let it dry completely, and if it's still showing a little bit, then just come back in again with your color lifter and just kind of push it back inside the lines, and um, that's a really cool little trick that I learned a long time ago uh, when I start, first started using uh, Stampin' Blends markers uh, because I do a lot of times color outside the lines because I'm not very neat at coloring. <laughs> so, all right, so then just come back in and just keep shoving it back until it finally turns white again, which it will eventually. Um, some of the darker colors, particularly the reds and the deep purples and the dark blues, uh, take a couple of tries to get it to, to go back where you want it to go. And sometimes there may be a little bit of a halo that you'll still see on there, but for the most part, um, you can get the colors to go back inside the lines. And then I'm just gonna take this and stick it here on the inside of my card. And again, I'm just trying to line it up so that it's even top to bottom. I'm not gonna press it down really hard just yet because I wanna make sure that my outside flap covers it, which it looks like it does. So I'm gonna give it a little press like this and then give it a good press like this. And that's it. So, oh, I did forget one thing. I almost forgot. I'd put some little champagne rhinestone jewels on it. So I've got the champagne rhinestone basic jewels. And I added a couple of those around the sentiment, maybe. There we go. So I've got one that I stuck here actually on the sentiment. Let me grab my snips and flip that little guy over. So I put a little one here and a little bit bigger one next to it. So it's kind of the, the um, medium-sized gem right there next to it. And that is it for the card. <laughs> so now we're officially done uh, with all the coloring, all the, the embellishments, all the little gems and the whatever. So, all right, so that is it. So anybody can do this. Anybody can use these, the Stampin' Blends markers and um, have a really pretty card when you're done. And now I have two more birthday cards done, so yay. <laughs> so, all right, so this is my original one. This is the one we recreated here today. And um, definitely, if you do not have the uh, Feels Like Home stamp set, which is this one, uh, make sure that you're getting your $50 or greater order put in before the end of celebration. You'll get double points from me, and you can earn the stamp set for free from Stampin' Up, and it's a good one, so you'll want it. <laughs> all right, um, let me know if you have any questions. I will be posting all the details for this card out on my blog tomorrow, uh, which is Wednesday, around 8 o'clock Eastern time. And um, once I get the blog post done, I will share the details uh, in the video description. So I'll share a link to it so you can hop over there and take a look at the um, blog post if you are interested. And I'll plan to be back live on my um, YouTube page on Friday around 2 o'clock Eastern time. And then back here again live on my Facebook page around 2 o'clock Eastern time next week, Tuesday. Have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your week, and we'll chat soon.